Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about the find command. Uh, specifically, we're going to be talking about the BSD and GNU find and not the find from Windows because the find on Windows works completely differently. Um, but we're, we're specifically talking about the one that you would run on Linux-like platforms. Um, and find is a utility for traversing the file system and applying a series of predicates to find, you know, files, files and directories and, and other stuff like that. Um, I actually think of find more as like a mini programming language, and it allows you to kind of combine a bunch of things together to produce other outputs. Um, so I'm going to show you a few uh, examples and how to use the, the find command. Uh, so just to get started, I need to create a bunch of files. I'm just going to set up a virtual environment because I think that gives us enough stuff to, to go off of, enough enough files that'll be interesting enough. So I'm just going to set up a virtual app. And we're going to look at the man page for find very briefly. Uh, and it kind of explains the basic structure of a command. Um, and you'll see that you use the find command. You have a series of you know top level options. Then you have a starting point. On Linux, this is optional. On BSD, it is not. So. On BSD, you have to do find dot, uh, whereas you can eliminate, you can you can avoid dot, and it'll assume your current working directory. Uh, we're actually going to be using find vm uh, to search inside the virtual environment. So this is the directory that you would start traversing downwards from, um, and it can you know it can be any path. It could be dot dot slash something just to search above you or whatever. Uh, but we're going to use vm. And then after that is an expression. And an expression is a series of predicates and actions. Um, by default, the find command uses the print action. So it will just print whatever it finds. If we do you know, find vmv, uh, so this will search everything inside the virtual environment, and it'll just print it out. Uh, now, this prints a lot of stuff because there are a lot of files, and there are a lot of directories. So by default, it's going to do you know every file, directory, et cetera. And you can see there's a whole bunch of stuff here. Um, but I didn't add any predicates, so I didn't filter it down at all. Um, and you can you can use the same commands, but you can use print. So this is the command portion of it. Um, this is equivalent to find VM without saying print. So print is implicitly the, the default one that happens there. Now, there are a ton of predicates here. Um, so where does the predicate start? OK, so this is filtering for depth. This is kind of a predicate, but not really. Um, this allows you to say, like, oh, I only want, let's say we did max depth 2. Find VM of max depth 2. Uh, you'll see that it didn't go further than two levels down. So we only get the, you know, the top two levels of, of that directory. So this is this is kind of a predicate, but also kind of not. Um, you can also use min depth to limit it to a particular thing. Um, but then you get to the really interesting <laughs> series of predicates. So there's a time, C time, executable. Oh, I find the executable one really useful. Like, I want to find all of the uh, executable files inside my virtual environment. Um, oh, it also includes directories because directories that are listable are executable as well. But let's filter just files. So to do files, you can do type F. Um, so this will just get our files in here. And you'll see we have some shared object files, which are executable. Interesting. Uh, it's because I've got MyPy installed. Let's actually uninstall MyPy because you won't see that. You won't see that on your. Um, this is left over from the previous video. I forgot to delete the directory. Okay, there we go. That's that's a little bit better. Oh, we still have typed AST. Anyway, these are these are the ones that you'll see when you run this. Um, so I've you know added one predicate. I've added another predicate. Predicates by default when you list them in order are evaluated using and. Uh, you could use or if you wanted to. Um, it doesn't really make sense in this case. <laughs> but um, yeah, because all of the things that are executable are, you know. Oh, I guess this is going to list files and things that are executable. So that'll list everything again. Um, but yeah, you can use dash O. And you can group things as well with parentheses. Um, but you have to quote them again because it's a, a shell. So uh, you have to make sure to, to you know quote things. So there's there's a whole like logic grouping and or situation that can go on there. Um, and again, note that I didn't do dash print at the end. So by default, it's just doing that for me. Um, the 
patterns that I find that are the most useful is to use the dash name um, predicate. And this will search just the file name. So if we do dash name, I don't know, let's say that we're looking at um, star.so files. Uh, well, actually you won't see any of those. So maybe let's do star.typed. Nope. <laughs> Star dot, uh, PS one. I see a PowerShell script there. Um, so this will allow you to filter things. Note again that I'm quoting this, uh, because otherwise my shell would interpret that star and wouldn't expand this properly. Um, so if we wanted to find, I don't know, Python files, you could do this, or if we wanted to find, uh, all of the init.py files, then I wouldn't need to quote this because there's no star in there, but, um, that'll find all of the init.py files for you. So that's the name predicate. I find that this is the one that I use the most. Uh, there is like full path, which one is that one? Well, the easiest way to find it is to put a slash in here and it will warn you. Uh, let's see, did you mean whole name? I see, yes, I did indeed mean whole name. Um, so you can use, I don't know, pip slash star slash init.py. Probably need a few more stars in here, no? Oh, we need star, pip star, yeah, there we go. Um, so that, that allows you to filter based on the entire name. So if you wanted to filter based on the path and the file name, that's useful as well. Um, what else did I want to show you? Oh, there's regex paths, uh, matching. If you want to use that as well, you can filter based on size, uh, type. We already showed that. Um, I usually just use type F for the most part. You can filter on users, um, and a bunch of other stuff. Um, one thing that I find really useful is from the actions, the delete action. So if we wanted to find VM dash names, throw it up PyC, for instance. Um, and you know, we don't need PyC files, so we can just delete them. Um, so that'll delete all of the PyC files and you can see that they're, they're not there anymore. Um, we can bring some of them back by doing that. But anyway, so that's the delete action. So I find that one's pretty useful. Uh, exec, this one's actually kind of tricky. There are two forms of exec. So let's do find vm bin dash type f. So we're gonna find all of the files in the bin directory. Uh, you can use find to execute a command directly. I personally find it's much easier to just pass things to xargs and do it that way. Um, but find has a way to do this built in. And so what you do is you do dash exec and you can pass an executable here. We're just gonna do python dash c import sys print sys.argv, and uh, so by itself, oops, oh yeah, missing argument to exact. By, by itself, uh, we need to have either a semicolon or a plus at the end, and this changes how find is going to pass arguments to this. Uh, let's do semicolon first. We also need to tell it where to stick the arguments, and with that you will put a curly brace, uh, a open and close curly brace, and if we have semicolon, you'll see that it runs each of them one at a time. Um, I find that semicolon is usually not what you want. Semicolon is going to be much slower because it needs to spin up this process many, many times. I find that plus is better. Uh, what plus does is it'll fold all the arguments over, kind of like Xargs would do. So you can see it ran all of that in one single argument. Now, I don't really like this syntax and it, I always forget whether to use semicolon or plus. So what I like to do instead is instead of doing exec, I will do print zero. What this does is it prints all of the names, but null byte separates them. And then I like to part, part, uh, pass this to xargs dash zero. Um, and then, you know, we can implement the same thing here. Python dash C, import sys, print sys.argv. And you'll see that we get essentially the same result here. I like this because it, you know, my brain thinks about it this way instead of being like, oh, is it supposed to be plus or is it supposed to be semicolon? I don't remember. But anyway, that was, that's the exec command. I also showed the print zero. There's exec dir if you want to do not just files. Uh, print zero. Yeah, this is what I was talking about. This is f print zero, which only prints file names, I guess. Um, I don't know. There's a bunch of other ones in here as well. But for the most part, that's the basics of find. I showed you a few common situations. I showed you how exec works with semicolon and plus. 
and how you can chain this to XRX. I actually did a video on XRX, so I will link that in the description as well. But anyway, hopefully this was useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.